Hey everybody, it's Miss Real. It's time for some fourth grade math today. We're back in the, the kitchen classroom and we're going to use the things that we talked about this week, which was mixed numbers and fractions and building these fractions to make mixed numbers, in other words, composing. We're going to use that information today to complete a task that has two parts and it has some little tasks to build each part of the task. So, let's get started. All right, so our task today is about talking about a landowner. And the landowner is going to sell three sections of his land, and that's represented here with our hexagons. Each one of these represents the land. Now, here's our first part of our task. So the landowner will only sell the land in sections that are one-third of a unit. So one-third. These will represent our thirds today. We'll also use these as a 3D model. I'll put these out for the first, this first part of our task. So those will be equal. They'll be, both be thirds. So we have Taylor, Bill, and Nick who are going to be the ones who purchase these sections. Taylor is, tells us purchases two sections, Bill purchases one section, and Nick purchases four sections. Now, what are we going to be doing? We're going to use pattern blocks to make a picture of how the land was divided up. Is there any land left after these guys going by? And if so, how much? And then we're going to write an equation to show how the land was split up. We'll kind of end up combining this, is there any land left, while we write our equation. That just works best there. Um, for me, you might find another way to do this, and I encourage you to go back and change these up the, to sevenths and fifths after this is over with and do your own. And I'll give you a website if you don't have math manipulatives that you can go to and do it virtually. Okay, so... I'm going to write on our board, I'm going to put this aside, I'm going to write a T for Taylor and a 2 there. I'm going to write a B for Bill, 1, and an N for Nick, 4. This is my record keeping, so to speak. Okay? So, one thing that I want you not to get caught up in whenever you're doing problems like this saying, oh my goodness, how do these thirds, how are they going to fit into there? How do I split that up into thirds if it's not called for? And in this problem, it's not called for. There's a point where, you're, where creative thinking can really hinder what you're trying to do, your problem solving and logical thinking. So I have to do that. I have to tame that a lot of times. So you want to make sure you're not sitting there trying to think, how do I split this into thirds? That's not even, even part of the task that we're doing. So... We're going to say that's one section she bought, and that's another. So she bought two thirds. And I'll represent that here, okay, with two of my pattern blocks. We're going to use this at the end to build them all. Bill is one third. And we'll make Bill get this little green one right here. So there's Bill's. And then Nick is four thirds. What do you see with four thirds? Yeah, he bought a whole one and one third, didn't he? But we'll put four thirds right here as Nick, four thirds. So we can kind of see that in 3D as well as our 2D. All right. So we have used our pattern blocks right here to show how it was divided up. Okay, we didn't have to actually divide it up in any way here. Just representing. Now, is there any land left? If so, how much? Well, in order to see if there's any land left, I've got to know how much land there was to begin with, right? And I'm talking about fractional pieces, so I know I have two-thirds plus one-third plus four-thirds. I'm going to leave that as four-thirds and not one and one-third. And we'll put this on here like this. All right. So that's how much in all. That rep 
represents this part of our equation. Now, and this is what it is. I'm not sure how far down that camera goes. So if I have that, I want to make sure that there's nothing else to add, which would be the difference between the two. So I'm going to come up and say, this would be three thirds because it's split into thirds. This one is another three thirds and three thirds. If I add all of those up, three thirds plus three thirds plus three thirds, I'm gonna get three, six, nine, nine thirds. Oops, that's how much that is whenever it's split. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my nine thirds right here, which we know equals three holes. So I have two plus one is three plus four is seven. So I have seven, oops, I didn't put mix on there. I just saw that one. I got all excited about my Unifix cubes. There we go, sorry about that. So now I have it on there. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven thirds all together. So how many thirds do I need to get to nine thirds, which I put it right here so you can see this. I am two thirds away, aren't I? So he sold seven thirds, but he did not sell two thirds. That's how much was left. So we used pattern blocks to create our model. We told how much was left and we wrote our equation. So we did all parts of this. And we showed in 3D too how much we sold. If this represents all three sections of the land, and this represents all the sections out of that. So I think we did good on that part. Very good. All right. Let's do part two. Part two, we're going to have more people in, and we're going to have it divided up differently. Let me get my land pieces up on here. So we still have our three pieces of land, but in this one, the landowner will only sell the land in sections that are one-sixth sections. So not thirds, but sixths now. So we have Tom purchasing three, Susan two, Bob four, Mallory one, and Wes six. Our mini task inside this part is we're gonna use our pattern blocks to make a picture of how the land was divided up, just like before. We're going to say if there's any land left, and if so, exactly how much. And we're going to write an equation to show how the land was split, just like before. Only difference is there's different amounts of people purchasing and there's different, uh, they're split up in six. That's what I mean at the beginning when I said you could go back and do this in fifths or fourths or eighths or ninths to have a little fun with this. I'm not going to use the Unifix cubes in this one, just our orange 2D pattern blocks. Okay, so I have, I'm gonna put a T for Tom, with three, an S for Susan, with two, a B for Bob, with four, Mallory was one, she's an M, and Wes is six, and he's a W. So here's how we're gonna set it up. I know if each of these are broken into six, what, how many pieces would be in my first, whoops, piece of land? I'll be right back, I've gotta get that piece. Okay. Whoops. If you said six, six, you are correct. So six, six, plus six, six, plus six, six. All together, that'd be three sixes, 18, six. That's what we're looking at, 1816 pieces. So on my board, I know that Tom is three six. 
So I'm going to put his three. Susan is two six. I'm going to put her two. Bob is four six. Oops. Four. Mallory just bought one six. And Wes bought six six. Ding, 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 ding. What can we say that Wes bought? What's an equivalence to what he bought? He bought one of the holes, didn't he? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So there we have it. My goodness. My little pieces are all wacky. Okay. Ah! My board is not working with me. That's all right. So. Oh, goodness gracious. Let's move it over. It needs the whole thing. All right. So now we've modeled with our pattern blocks the fractions. Remember, if we look at these, don't sit there and say, wait a minute, how much space that takes up is not the same as this. We're strictly modeling. So we don't have to sit there and get that in depth and say, oh my goodness, it's not the same area. Because we're not talking about area at all. So I need to add up Tom's and all the other people who went and bought the land. So I'm just putting all of theirs down here. We're going to find the sum of those. And it should be what? It should be 18 six because that's how many six there are now. So let's see if they bought all the land or if there's any left. So I know three and two is five, five and four is nine, nine and one, 10, 10 and six is 16. So I'm keeping that in mind, 16, six. So I can definitely see that I am not at 18, six. So how many more one six do I need to get to 18, six? I need Two sixth. So I circle that because that's the amount that he that was not um, divide, that was not sold. That is left. Two six. It's almost all of it, isn't it? They used almost every bit of that in purchases. By the way, what would this be if I wanted to make this a mixed number, sixteen six, and I want to look at how many holes? that they did sell, 16 six, one six. I could make one one six, six six, that'd be one hole. That would be six six. I could do another six six, that would be 12 six. Could I do a third one? No, because remember we're two six away. So I could would have two holes, which would be, that would be at, 12, 6, and 16, 6 minus 12, 6 is 4, 6. So they, this is how much, two holes and then four of these broken into six. So then two of those would be left if I wanted to look at that in a different way. All right. This was fun today. I love doing math. I hope you do too. So I will put both of these, a picture of these two tasks on your, uh, on the below in the comments and you can change up the people, you can change up what they bought, you can change up the land being split uh, to make this a different, a whole new activity. And if you do not have, you can always use marbles to represent your fractional pieces. You could cut up paper. But if you'd like to do this virtually, if you'll go to httpmathplayground.com slash pattern blocks, and then of course HTML, 
and I'll put a picture of this down in the comments too, then you can do it virtually. So you can use those pattern blocks online. Those are fun. But use things around the house. Cut up paper. Anything works. Have fun with it, guys. Tomorrow we won't have a lesson, and then Monday we won't because it's, it's Easter break. So I'll be back with you on Tuesday. We'll do some more math. Have a great long weekend. Enjoy yourself. Get out and play. It's pretty out there. The wind is blowing like crazy today. Have a great, great weekend. Bye-bye.